All right, you're probably wondering, what am I doing on a massage table? Truth is, today I'm going to be taking you behind the scenes to how the first step of making money online is pretty much like in a massage. That's right. I like you to think about if you are the person doing the massage, at the end of it all, there are a few type of people that you're going to be serving. Right? The first type of people are the broke, cheapskate people that would hire you and at the end of the day, look at you and say, well, thank you very much and just leave. No tips, nothing. In fact, they might not even say thank you. They might complain and, and try to get their money back. Okay, that's the first type of audience. But what if the second type of audience are the people who are willing to pay you a decent tip, right? Like the industry average tip, which is like what's considered to be fair. And the third type of audience, which is your ideal audience, are the people who would actually pay you a premium. Now, this is the first step to really making money online and building a successful business that's highly scalable. And that is the theme of this topic, which is identifying who is your ideal audience and your customers. And today, I'm going to be taking you behind the scenes to a coaching session where my students, they pay a lot of money to be there, where I'm going to walk you through exactly step by step on how do you actually deconstruct and find that ideal customer. Should you go broad? Should you niche down? Where are they hanging out? We're gonna go through all these different questions so that by the end of this session, you're gonna be able to see where your ideal customers are hanging out and you're no longer selling to broke people. Let's begin with today's session. Usual question as always, who do you serve and the result you generate? I serve people to help people to lose weight for good and uh, they eat whatever they want. If they don't want exercise, they don't need to exercise. I did my first ever webinar probably about a month ago. My click funnel didn't really link with the Facebook ad. 30 or 40 people click. It's only like six people managed to register. They all show up. But I didn't make any sales afterwards, but it's my first ever webinar. I reveal my uh, data. I I noticed a lot of people click the link, but they're not converted to go to ClickFunnels. So I thought, oh, it's in my video. So I did another video, but the problem is that got banned. Got it. Okay, so so you spent $60 and you got about 15 people click and zero leads. The first thing to understand is it's really hard to draw a conclusion based on a $60 spent. Why? Because there are many different variations that could be a factor. But let's take a look at the landing page, which is this. Is this the landing page, Joyce? Yes, that is the landing page, yes. So, guys, whenever you build up this landing page, try to utilize and model my webinar page layouts. We do a lot of testing and all of our different webinars, the layouts, the reason why it is the way it is, is because it converts. Now, the first thing that is decreasing your conversion is because you are asking for full name, email, and phone number, which in most cases is usually not a bad idea if you intend to follow up with some sort of text. If you do not intend to have some sort of follow-up sequence via texting, then don't ask for their phone number because your conversion is going to be lower as a direct result of this phone number. What you want in your email marketing strategy is not to ask for somebody's full name. It is to ask for somebody's first name because when you use people's first name in an email, it sounds more personalized. And the way you also do that, and we're going to go into a little bit more email marketing strategy is to not use their first name at the start of the email because that's what every single marketer does. Let's take a look at what's next. Free webinar training reveals the proven formula used to drop a dress size in two weeks without stepping foot in the gym. Okay, so right now what's happening, Joyce, is that you are repeating what's mentioned over here and you always want to think about your landing page as real estate space. The next issue is that when person lands on this page, it's hard to build trust. Number one, it's because first of all, the connection here is when a person sees this, it does look like a stock image, but it creates this doubt because now I'm thinking, is, is this Joyce? And if they assume that this is you, can you imagine they signed up expecting to see this person over here and then they see your face and they'd be like, oh, wait a second. Wait, let me just put this page in it. <laughs> right? Okay, so so you, you see that incongruence there. This needs to be you, like straight up. My 
a strategy is always look at your own personal diet. That's why you can still eat whatever you like because what you currently eating is something that you like already. But we look at how can we tweak that, like fine tune your own diet to make your own diet work for you. Agreed. By the way, is this something that is related to what it is that you do full time at your practice? Yes. Yes. Okay. So. I believe that that actually helps in terms of credibility, and in terms of positioning, and in terms of getting a person to see that in a sea of weight loss scams, this is one person that is willing to put herself out there right at the start and leading with content and education and being real. So what I want to see, what's missing on this page, is the feeling of authenticity that this webinar is going to, in fact, give me value if I were to register and show up. Imagine if they landed on your page, and but imagine if it was a video and you were at your clinic or at your practice, and you're showing them. So. What is the number one reason why people fail at dieting? It is because it's real simple. It's just one word. It's sustainability. Look, it is easy to lose weight in two weeks by starving yourself and eating salad every day. But the right question to ask is: Is it sustainable? Because the truth is, if you hate eating salad, and because our willpower is a limited resource, what do you think is going to happen one month later, two months later, three months later? You're just gonna go back to eating your chocolate cakes again, and yo-yo back to even worse than before. Hey, my name is Joyce Lee, and today I want to share with you. After running my own practice, helping people be in their fittest shape of their lives, what I realize is that it all just comes to sustainability. Finding a program that actually works in line with what it is you love eating, finding a program that is sustainable for you, finding something that. You would actually love and wouldn't mind being on doing day in day out, and that is what this webinar is about. I want to be able to help you find that program that actually works for you, that doesn't feel like you want to kill yourself every single day because you're just eating the food that you actually hate. And what if I told you that that literally is the secret to sustainable, and that's the key word here, sustainable weight loss. The truth is, anybody can lose weight in one week, starving themselves, but it's not sustainable. So if this is something that you would be interested in, if this is something that excites you, then I want to urge you to join me at this training where I'm going to be showing you exactly what you need to do in order to make it happen. So notice what I'm doing here, Joyce. The key ingredient that's missing on your landing page it's the trust factor. That stock image of that lady over there it makes it too professional, and therefore you actually lose trust because of that. Yeah, I definitely gonna improve my funnel. I can see that is not authentic. I mean, now I can see myself. It's not really authentic, and I think by improving the video which I did originally, be more authentic on the first one, then hopefully that will up the the click rate will increase as well. That's why I can see that was issues on that as well. Tell me more about this. Tell us more about this. What what is Sheffield? So basically, this is. This is a clinic that me and my husband, obviously, you met Michael before. Like, is a major is pain cl- clinic, like neurology clinic, which my husband run mostly, and that's why I now work in that clinic with him for the past probably five years with my nutritionist side of knowledge, and that's why majority of people come to me. They lose weight. Okay, so here's the reason why I asked that question. Okay, you see, this is what creates a new opportunity. You see, weight loss itself. It's not a new opportunity, right? P- far too many people hear of weight loss all the time. So we want to think about like what makes it different. Is it different because we are niching down and we're only serving a very specific group of people? Is it because the people you serve are mainly athletes facing this main issue? You've always heard me say this before, right? Being a generalist is what most people try to do. Most people try to. Target more people to try to make more money without realizing that it actually weakens them, and that is what this offer is doing. This offer, when I see this, is a generic weight loss offer, but that actually weakens your offer. I want to be able to determine and ask you to reflect on, under the category of weight loss, how can you create this blue ocean in a red ocean by either niching down. 
So basically, me and my husband have worked over the past 10 years. We help literally Premier League footballers. We help Team GB. Uh, we actually, that is the category of people we help as well as the majority population as well. But we definitely help the elite athlete. On top of the messaging tweak, your goal here is to really think about that ideal client. And to me, from what you're saying, it sounds like your ideal client is the athlete. As an athlete, number one, the pain is a whole lot more where they're willing to pay more and they're more hungry for the information because there's something real at stake. It's their performance. It is optimization. It is during race day. It is during training. I haven't really thought about it because I guess my mind blockage is uh, we can never disclose the, the client detail because they are elite after we have Hollywood stars, but because of their identity, we cannot say who they are. So I always worry that that is the barrier that people say, oh, like, oh, she's such a treat Premier League footballer, but she can't mention who it is. Like, because it is a, basically it's something that we have to keep secret of being, being a medical professional, we can't disclose the name. Which, by the way, I would totally say that. And that actually means you're being even more transparent. No, so, so the way you say it is this. One of the things that we do is we help high performers, professional football players, as well as athletes reach their peak performance, as well as overcome injury. So the question is, so you might probably be thinking, you know, George, why don't you reveal the names? The truth is I can't. First of all, bound by law and professionalism. Here's the thing. When, when people can see that you are in a practice, it's a real clinic, and they can see on video that this is what it is that you do, Look, you're only selling them to come on a webinar. The sale isn't here yet, right? So that languaging in terms of helping high performance athletes, professional footballers, that's definitely the angle. And the angle is coming back to what is the commonality that we discovered over and over again after helping hundreds of professionals, hundreds of athletes. It all comes down to you probably know the answer but it's nutrition. So let's talk about finding that nutritional plan that works for you or whatever it is, okay? But sports, performance, and athletes, that would be the angle I would definitely utilize, especially since that is what you do in your business full-time now as well. Cool. No, I think that's really good. I mean, I, I always didn't see that. I thought generic is better, but I, I do agree that now I can see that. Narrower, the better. And that's what I want to see you do with your offer as well. Not by being general or generic, but by, by niching down. Okay? Well, I hope you enjoyed the behind the scenes to this coaching call. If you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments below what your biggest takeaway is. And as always, be sure to smash the like button. It does help the channel out a little bit. And to subscribe to this channel if you want to be notified of future videos just like this one. Now, some of you asking me, how can I be part of this process? How can I ask you questions? How can I have you coach me or mentor me? We want to make sure that we are working with the people that's right fit you'll need to fill up a form there's a link right below this video somebody on my team might give you a call to interview you to see if the right fit for each other and if you want to apply and see if you're a good fit then all you need to do is click on this link in the description box below and my team will be in touch with you